asking the question, should you marry for money? Or if you are married, should you have married for money? Uh, we all know, and we've, and we've been talking about, money issues are the number one reason that 50% of all marriages fail and that 75% of all second marriages fail because of money. Now, we have five moms on our stage right now, and all of them have young daughters. And all of them have very strong opinions about whether they'd want their young daughters to marry for money. Okay, Orencia. Yes. How old is your daughter? She's seven. And what do you teach her when it comes to money and men? I want her to get married to a guy that's financially secure, financing, that he would be able to provide for her. I know that you told her something about cookies. Yes. Um, <laughs> this is a little boy in her class. He's always trying to talk to her, and I tell him that if he can give her a cookie during lunch time, then he can talk to her. If he can't, don't talk to him. Is this the cookie symbolize money? Is that what like it no, kind of yeah, symbolizes just, to you? I'm training her. Training her. Training her. her. <laughs> that if he can't give you cookies. Yes, if he can't give you a cookie, don't compensate with him. Don't compensate. <laughs> don't compensate. <laughs> compensate <laughs> cookie. No cookie, no, no compensate. Okay. Flirt with her. I don't agree with that at all. No. What about that little girl's self-worth? No, but... Okay. What about her self-independence? Well, she's going to be independent, but at the same time, he's flirting with her. He's trying to get what to What about her. what she stands for? Maybe he has something more meaningful than a cookie to offer her, like a friendship, uh, which is well, much more important and valuable yeah. than teaching your daughter to go with him for something. A cookie can be here today and gone tomorrow. Well, tomorrow. Tell me what happened on Valentine's Day. <laughs> Valentine's Day. What happened on Valentine's Day? Well, this little boy gave. And you were her, proud of her on Valentine's Day for this. What well, happened? She came home and told me that a little boy offered her a teddy bear, and she did, she turned down a teddy bear because the teddy bear looked cheap looking. All of these moms agreed to let their daughters participate in a social experiment so that we could hear how they feel about money and marriage. Again, these are all little girls of all the mamas on the stage. Check this out. These cute and adorable little girls, ranging from different cultures and different backgrounds, represent the future women of America. With the help of specialist Cooper Lawrence, we wanted to see at what age do girls start recognizing men with money and have their first impressions already been made concerning happiness and wealth. Okay, between these two, who would you rather marry? Why did you choose the business guy? Because he's rich. Okay. <laughs> would anybody marry him? If he had a better job, I would marry him. People wouldn't really like him because he's touching like racist stuff. I think marrying someone who works on Wall Street would be better because they would share the same value. What kind of values does somebody on Wall Street have? To make money and have a nice lifestyle. Like nice clothes, nice house, a Blackberry. The waiter? Or the movie star? Movie star. Movie star? Movie star. He has a lot of money and buys a lot of stuff because he's famous and I can buy stuff with him. I still wouldn't marry him if he had a lot of money because it really doesn't matter about the money. Okay. Now, do you think you would marry somebody who was a waiter? Uh-uh. They told me I'm going to be mad I can marry a waiter. Would you marry him? <laughs> Why not? Because he pick up garbage and I think he'll make a lot. <laughs> okay, next guy. Actually, like, I can relate to this because when my mom and my dad met, and my dad told my mom that he wanted to be a teacher. And my mom said, I'm not marrying a teacher. So he went to law school. You could be the most richest person in the world and still be miserable. I think money can buy happiness. I want to marry somebody with a lot of money. I think money means very much to me, and I think money can also buy happiness. I am shocked. Are you guys shocked? The little yeah. baby girls. Oh my gosh, saying that money can buy happiness. Um, Arencia, so your daughter says that she wants to marry a rich yes. man. Did that make Mama proud? Yes. Like you what she was saying? Yes. Yes? Why do you want to marry a rich man? Because he, he go buy like a lot of stuff. Like what kind of stuff would he buy you? Um, like shoes, clothes, and a house, and like a school for your kids. 
Your daughter said that uh, you'd be mad if she married a poor man. She said that in the tape. I'll be mad. No, I just don't want it hard on my daughter. One, I do want her to be independent, but have, I, I mean, I want her to have her a good education. I want her to be independent, but at the same time, I want her, if she's not strong enough, if someday a guy comes along and want to marry her, that he's independent himself. Sydney, so. um, in the tape, your, your daughter said that she wanted a certain lifestyle. Yes, um, I heard Sydney say that, and I'm not surprised. Sydney's growing up in a two-career um, two-income household. We're both attorneys. And she, while she's saying that she would like nice things, it's clear to me that she's growing up in a house where she understands the work ethic. Mm -hmm. And uh, both of us are hardworking. We, and um, she knows that I joke about you can marry more money in five minutes than you can make in a lifetime. But it's extremely important to be independent and make your own living. I, I have a lot of oh, friends. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Tell me about this joke. I never heard that. You can marry more money <laughs> in five minutes than you can, you can earn, make, in a lifetime. earn in a lifetime. What? You've joked and said that to her. I joke about that. Do but you think in, subliminally she's like, yeah, you're right, I could. Well, every advantage that you can have in your life that makes it easier is certainly a good thing. But to be independent and to be able to earn your own living at any point, even if you choose at, at some point in your life to stay home for a while, mm -hmm. but to have the option to enter the workforce and be able to support yourself. Nadja, um, why do you think it's more important to marry for love and not money? Because if you marry for money, it will be karma. It will come back on you. Mm -hmm. If you marry for money, it will be karma? Okay, so you're saying that's a good thing to marry for money or a bad thing? A bad thing. It's a bad thing. Mama. She's preaching what you say. Yes. Um, That's, and how old are you, Anja? Eight. Eight. Wow. How do you yes. feel hearing her say that? I teach my girls to marry for love. Mm -hmm. um, love can last forever. Mm -hmm. Money can be here today and gone tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, I also teach my girls to be self-independent, to value their self-worth, and I invest. If I want them to be financially independent just like other mothers I learned to invest um, and at the same time educate them on how to manage that. Terrell admits that she married her ex-husband Sherman for his money but she say she says that it backfired on her so it backfired okay first of all so you married him because you were attracted to what he had like his money yes yeah, okay um, we were friends before getting married and as a friend, he was a great provider, always gave me what I needed, and if I asked for money, he gave it to me. And then, so when he proposed to me, I decided, well, yeah, you know, he was a great provider as a friend. This will be even better as a wife. I'll get everything now. So when you're walking down the aisle, you're walking down the aisle, there's people on this side, people on that side, people are crying and mm -hmm. stuff, and they're thinking, oh, this love, look at my baby, it's just <laughs> love. What are you thinking when you're walking down that aisle? Um... To be honest, yeah. I'm thinking that it'll turn into love. Wow. I'll get there. Don't worry. <laughs> Just hold on. Get there. I'll get there. Okay. So, yeah. Sherman, what happened to the, your relationship? I know you lost your business. You went from having so much money to losing your business. Yes. And then what happened? I lost my wife because I couldn't provide the things that she wanted and the things that she needed. But because I felt as though we had we, we had a child after we got married, and I felt as though that we should have focused more on that than going to do this and going to do that, mm -hmm. and our child should have been first, not money. I didn't know, I had no idea that we was marrying each other for money. So when she's walking toward you, what are you thinking as that your bride is walking toward you on your wedding day? I'm the luckiest man in the world. Luckiest man in the world. That's what I was like. Mm. Oh, it's here. <laughs> <laughs> so did you try to make it work? Well, we tried, but there's no satisfying when I was listening. I, I tr we tried to make it work, but it couldn't work because I can't. I could not provide the things that she wanted. Mm -hmm. I understand it I, really broke you. Oh yes. Yeah, it broke, broke you to tears. Oh yeah, I cried yeah. about it. I cried about it, but I couldn't let it kick me down. I had to pick myself up, brush myself off, and keep it moving because we have a child together. Mm -hmm. That's all right. Don't misunderstand anything. I did try. It wasn't like I just said, okay, well, finances is going. But it was like after we got married, he lost his car. He lost his job. Mm -hmm. Everything was all on me. Mm -hmm. And I started feeling like, well, God, I might as well be by myself if I do everything all by myself. Mm -hmm. Well, especially...